good afternoon and a warm welcome to one and all present here. We have assembled here for the U.S. Samvada with Dr. K. Sudhakar, Honorable Minister of Health and Family Welfare and Medical Education, Government of Karnataka at Bangla Medical College and Research Institute. This program is a platform to provide a direct communication between the Honorable Minister and the medical students. So, before we begin with the program, we humbly request our, our Director Come Dean, Dr. Ravi K, BMCRI, to welcome the gathering and the Honorable Minister. Good afternoon, everyone. Honorable Minister for Health and Family Welfare and Medical Education, Dr. Sudhakar Sir, Principal BMCRI, Dr. Vishwanath, and my dear students, other dignitaries who are present here. Well, it's a very proud moment for us, BMCRI faculty members and students today. We have amongst us our Minister for Medical Education and Health and Family Welfare, Dr. K. Sudhakar, to visit us and participate in this unique program called as Yuva Samvada. This is the first of its kind happening in this institute and the state and a very unique program where the students have got an opportunity to interact with him directly. We welcome you, sir. Dr. Sudhakar, <clears throat> Dr. Sudhakar is one of the youngest cabinet ministers in the government of Karnataka. He is a medical doctor by profession. He is a three-time member of Karnataka Legislative Assembly. Being health minister of Karnataka, he has led the state fight against COVID-19 over the last two years from the front. Under his leadership, Karnataka has emerged as one of the best performing states in, in India in managing and mitigating this pandemic. He is currently <laughs> leading an ambitious project to upgrade over 2,500 primary health centers in Karnataka to world-class medical facilities. Karnataka has one of the best doctors to people ratios in India and his efforts have been to leverage this further and make it par with the Western standards. To achieve this, he has embarked on an ambitious push towards establishing new medical colleges to all districts of Karnataka through the public-private partnership route. A philanthropist at heart, he runs the Shanta Education Institutions, which provide value-based education to thousands of underprivileged students in Karnataka. He is involved in significant charitable activities through Dr. K. Sudhakar Foundation and the Sri Sai Krishna Charitable Trust. Sir, Bangalore Medical College is very unique, sir. We have around 250 undergraduate students admissions annually and 300 postgraduate students annually with all faculties put together. We have got more postgraduate students admission <laughs> compared to the EMCRI. And we also have 20 super specialty admissions annually in addition to the various fellowship courses which we offer in this institution, sir. It's a great pleasure and privilege to welcome you to this prestigious institution to work under your guidance, sir. I also take this opportunity to welcome our principal, Dr. H.L. Vishwanath, for this program. I also welcome all our beloved students who have made this institute proud for us to this program. I also welcome all other dignitaries who are there on the front of the dais. Thank you. We, wish you, we welcome you, sir. Thank you, sir. Let's now begin this program with invoking of the blessings of the God Almighty, for which we humbly request the dignitaries on the dais to light the lamp. Thank you, everybody. 
We now request our director come dean, Dr. Ravi K, and our principal, Dr. H.L. Vishwanath sir, and the students to felicitate the Honorable Minister. Thank you. It's now time for us to officially start this program, for which we request Dr. K. Sudhakar, Honorable Minister of Health and Family Welfare and Medical Education, Government of Karnataka, to kindly speak a few words. After which, the floor will be open for the questions. Yellargo Namskara Karnataka da Kannada da Namskara Bharata da Namskara Nirdeshikra Agirta Kanta Dr. Ravi Avare Pranchupal Agirta Kanta Dr. Vishwanath Avare Yella E. Pratishtita BMC Samstea Adyapaka Runda Dore Nananichina Vidyarti Vidyarti Nere. I'm very happy to have initiated this Yuva Samvad in none other than the most prestigious medical institution in the state, BMCRI. <laughs> to be very honest, I am also very privileged to be amongst you because I know every one of you who have all sought the admission, who have all successfully who have got the admissions in BMCRI, this is the cream of Karnataka and the rest of India. So in the selection, the top meritorious students do opt obviously for BMCRI. So you are the privileged ones and you are the meritorious ones. And so I decided this is one of the oldest institutions. As a medical education minister, I wanted to do this as soon as I assumed uh, the charge. But unfortunately, in the last two and a half years, we all had to face the COVID pandemic. So I could not really interact with students. I always thought we should understand the problems or suggestions as it is by interacting with young friends. So today I don't want to speak, I don't want to make a speech. I'm here to listen to you. I'm here to answer your queries. To, together, let us try to make this institution uh, much better. It should compete with any of the most advanced international universities in the world. So we must take this institution very high. And for that, this government will act very proactively and will be very supportive to the cause. So I would like to take my questions. So all of you feel free. I am one amongst you. That is why I had requested Dean. Except Dean and Principal, let us not have any faculty members so that I want to listen to every student. I know that there are about 15% of students from outside the state in undergraduation. I think in post-graduation we have uh, equal percentage, 50, 50 from Karnataka and 50 from outside the state. So I wanted you to be as comfortable as possible. Any questions that you really wanted to ask, you wanted to know, or that government wanted, uh, government should have done it for you, be it hostels, be it medical education, the quality of education, exchange program, or the new opportunities new technologies, innovations, research, the various aspects. So
So I am open to take any questions in the 360 degree view that you all want to ask me. Okay, please go ahead. Good afternoon, sir. It's an honor to interact with you. Sir, my question is, as the Health Minister of Karnataka, what do you think is the biggest problem in healthcare sector that our country is facing right now? And what more can be done to solve those problems, sir? Very good question. What's your name? Chinmay, sir, from Chinmay. second year MBBS. Second year MBBS. Yeah, it's a very important question from the perspective of giving good health care uh, to the people of this country. As I see, the most important aspect of healthcare is availability in the first place. Second is accessibility. The available facility should be accessible to everybody, cut across the section of the society. And it has to be affordable. These are the three broad things that we should keep in mind as a government. And that is what exactly our Honorable Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi, especially after he assuming as a Prime Minister, uh, he is focusing upon. And this state government also, we are striving to provide the best health services uh, to every citizen of this state. We all know that there is a huge gap between urban and rural areas. We have to take the global health care standards till village, to the last mile. Connectivity, that should happen. Uh, of course, there are various other things that government should think of. We all know that today preventive medicine, before preventive medicine, predictive medicine is also evolving. Uh, we, have, we are mindful on that. Apart from the predictive, preventive, uh, we are also concentrating on establishing lot of uh, secondary and tertiary hospitals. So Karnataka is actually pioneer in, since it is a pioneer in medical education, we, have, we are in a better position than in many other states. But fundamentally, for your question, I feel that every individual in this country, every citizen of this country, it is their fundamental right to get access the global standards of healthcare. So that is what every government, responsible government, should strive upon and to meet it. Thank you, sir. We request the students to ask their questions as you feel. Now the second question, please uh, stand up, please volunteer and continue thereafter. Second question. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Uh, I am Rose George, uh, third year medical student, sir. sir uh, I'm sorry, I didn't get your name. My name is Rose George. Rose George, yes, yeah. Uh, actually, you were also a medical student once. Uh, sir, uh, we, we would I, would I would like to know, sir, uh, how you handle your stress during your medical life, sir? Can you, <laughs> like, uh, even... <laughs> Uh, whether it be during the exams or uh, during the duty hours or during the internship hours, yeah. how did you handle your stress, sir? Can you give us a few tips? It's a very interesting question. It reminds me of so many good memories. It's really 27, 28 years ago that I joined uh, medicine way back in 93, 94 batch. Of course, like all of you, I had to go through the same things. Uh, once you started uh, clinicals, then we had more duties, especially during house surgency, 
I had to do three months of house surgency in Tumkur. I studied in Tumkur, in a rural area of Tumkur. Then the nine months I did in today's boring college. Uh, stress is something, you know, it depends on how we take. If you are friendly, if you have more number of friends, I think stress has really not bothered me at all, especially the work stress or the studies, examinations. This has never bothered me. Uh, of course, as a house surgeon, it used to be tedious. It used to be tedious. But on weekends, I don't know how many of you go for watching movies. We used to regularly go watch movies on the weekends. And on Sundays, on every Sunday, there used to be a one very small restaurant, Gafur. There used, biryani used to be very, very delicious there. <laughs> so, we used to go. And of course, we used to trek sometimes in uh, Devra in Durga. Today, it's called Didi Hills. Any of you from Tumkur? None of you? Yeah, few hands there. So they would know it. So it's a beautiful place, but the roads were pathetic. Today we can reach Tumkur in 50 minutes. I still remember those days. Sometimes it used to, it used to take me three hours to reach Tumkur because it was a single lane. If some event, accident event, something takes place, you are struck for next three hours. So that used to be the situation. But I think as a, as a person who has gone through your journey, I can only say that since you have all liked and you have followed your heartbeat, you are here. So every moment during your medical education, while you are doing medical education, you must cherish the moment. Everything you should regard it as an experience. The experience you have gone through, you should know that 100 years, 100 years, 100 batches before you, they have not faced what you have gone through. So this is a great occasion where you were able to face this pandemic. You came to know what pandemic means, how to handle pandemic. So it's a great journey. That's why I always said from 2020, whoever joined or whoever did their housemanship, house surgeonship, or post-graduation, they're very privileged and uh, in the rest of their lives, I think it always, uh, there will be a kind of uh, good feeling because they would have saved so many lives during this meaningful uh, years of the journey. Thank you. Anyone else? Good afternoon, sir. Uh, I'm Akash Gangadhar uh, from final year MBBS. So my question is, uh, we see uh, instances of violence against doctors almost um, monthly, daily, and everything. And it's been further catalyzed by uh, the pandemic. I would like to know your thoughts on a legislative bill that helps, um, that talks about the doctor's right to self-defense. And I would also like to ask your thoughts on how to uh, cope or deal with violence in our workplace. Yeah, that's a very good question. And that is terrible. If somebody is making allegation or physically trying to assault a doctor, treating doctor, it is inhuman. The law doesn't permit. You can sit after. 
Because during COVID times, I've observed, as a health minister, I've taken utmost steps, especially in Kalburgi. I still remember the dean then. She was horrified by what happened uh, in, one of the, uh, in one of the days, in the nights, actually. So a mob came there. They started, see, obviously, it is a human interface. We all know that the emotion will be running too high in the families. When somebody uh, who is there thick and thin, unfortunately, you know, passes away, obviously, they feel the treating doctor has not done justice. This is their perspective. But for a treating doctor, we all know that no doctor will easily allow somebody to pass away. He or she will give their 100%. Till the last minute, we all fight for it. Because I always say, God cannot be everywhere. That is why he created all of us doctors in this world. So we all know that how society treats us most of the times. These are some stray incidents that takes place in areas. It's not just rural areas. Even in cities, it has taken place. So the law is very strict on this. We can take action. We have taken action. The law is very strict. And this state government also will adhere to the law and will ensure the safety of not just the doctors, the entire health staff. We'll ensure that. In fact, there is a penal section also. If somebody assaults the doctor, he can be imprisoned for a few years with penalties. So the law is very clear. Uh, we, want to, uh, we want to definitely make more awareness about such incidents. And when we have taken some action on uh, certain incidences on certain people. We would like to showcase that using our social media platforms, in media. We, we should circulate these things. People should be aware it is an offense. It is a legally very serious offense, which can be, you know, which can imprison for many years, along with penalties. So we are very strict on that. And if you take the incidences in the last three, four years, it is declining. That is a good sign. That is a good sign. But still, we'll have to ensure that no doctor or no health staff is affected. Because they're not just affected physically. They're horrified and they're, they're affected mentally also. Few doctors, they cannot go back to workplace for many more days. I've seen that in, in the past. So that is why in such cases, the government should stand firm. I've always stood firm as a health minister. And I appeal to all the head of the institutions, head of their units, to stand by them like a pillar of strength. And they should also definitely stand by them, not just morally, legally also. Legally, you should fight. Legally, you should bring somebody to the books. Then only when such incidences takes place, the other people also gets the opinion that this is something which we cannot do it. Parallelly, we should also try to communicate to people before treatment, during treatment, and after treatment. Because 
we do our best. But at the end of the day, there are so many uh, other reasons for which a patient cannot, we can't uh, ensure his safety. That is why we should counsel the, pa uh, the patient's attenders, relatives, and we should make sure that they are fully aware of the situation. Unless that is given, uh, the, the patient's parents or their relatives, they don't understand the exact uh, situation and they act uh, violently. Sir, now six months before you announced that there will be nine new colleges under PPP model. Yes. Uh, so how will that be different from existing government or private colleges? Sir? And the second question is, uh, from the last decade we are seeing uh, exponential growth in medical seats uh, in the state. So we witnessed the same situation uh, with the engineering students also when there was rapid growth in the IT sector, but uh, after a few time, uh, they, many, many engineering graduates turned out to be unemployed, sir. So how can you assure that don't happen with medical students also, sir? There was a time when WHO said that there should be a one doctor for at least 1,100 population. But today in Karnataka from we were one for almost 2,300 people a few years ago. In Karnataka today we have reached a stage where there is one doctor for every 900 and odd people. If you consider even Ayush doctors, then we have one doctor for every 700 and odd people. Definitely the doctors are definitely increasing year on adding year on year because we are adding medical colleges also. For the nation which has 1.3 billion and we are heading towards 1.4 billion, I think we are sh still short of doctors when you compare the entire nation. When you take the entire nation into consideration, still we are short. Karnataka, as I said, it is the pioneer in starting a lot of medical colleges. Way back in 60s, 70s, we had medical colleges. So that is the advantage Karnataka has. Today, even if there is a medical tourism that is happening, it is because of that. We have some state-of-the-art hospitals, state-of-the-art medical colleges, government and private. Coming to your second question of starting nine uh, colleges on a PPP model, public-private partnership. Uh, this, I conceived the idea based on the Niti Aayog's reports. Because to start a medical college, the government had to spend, uh, today if, if I want to start a government medical college, it costs me 750 crores. It's a huge burden on our exchequer. So we thought that if there is a concessioner who will participate, he will do the investment, we will provide the land, and of course, uh, we would be what, how government or how students in Karnataka will be benefited is, at least 40 to 50 percent of the student intake will be of the from the government quota. So to that extent, the state will be benefited. And once when medical college come, we all know that there will be a tertiary hospital attached to it, from 500 to 700 bedded hospital. Uh, so you will get a global, I mean, you will get a good healthcare facility which will be catering to that particular geographic uh, uh, demography, that uh, district. We have nine more districts in the Karnataka where we do not have a government medical college. But there are private medical colleges in those districts. But we want to have an entity where government is also part of it, partially part of it. 
So here we will be 50% or 40% stakeholder protecting our students, protecting the interests of the people in terms of the healthcare facility. The entire investment will be from the private entity. So this is uh, last year we conceived this idea and we were working since last one year. I think we have reached a stage where we can float the tender. We will start with uh, Daungere, Udupi, Kolar and Bangalore Rural. We are starting these four colleges in the next one month. Uh, the tender process I mean to say. But I feel the way you compared with engineers, the number of engineers, I don't think so we have reached that stage. Or we'll be reaching that stage in the near future. Today, our specialities, subspecialities, subspecialities are so much expanded. The people's awareness also towards healthcare is so much so now. Every person wants to go and take an opinion. And once taking an opinion, if he feels that he would like to take a second opinion, technology innovation is improving. So we have a lot of opportunities. Doctors have a lot of new opportunities, not just in medical profession, as in just uh, clinicians. You could work in the telemedicine space. You could work in the tele-ICU space. There are a lot of research going on. A lot of modern technologies is coming. So I don't think so doctors will ever face that situation of unemployment, uh, in my opinion. My question is, nowadays we see very few young politicians. Like what should be changed to get more youth into politics? You should see me and get into politics. Yes, sir. Manikanda. Oh. So you should see people like me, and you should all get into politics. Like one English poet said, he said once, politics, the space of politics is not for good people. No, it sir, is I for, didn't. that's what he was saying. But you just imagine every amendment or every law that is enacted in our society, in our state and nation, it is enacted by the people who are elected by the people of this country. So if your elected representatives are those who cannot think for his people. If somebody is not aware or if he is not educated, if he is not committed, and most of them are refracts, what can happen to the society? I know politics is not an easy ball. It's a very difficult terrain. It's a very difficult terrain. And it needs a lot of push and pulls. It's not just on your uh, merits, your efficiency. But in spite of all that, when we see people like our Honorable Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi, if his father, the way, the background he has come from, from a tea seller, becoming a prime minister of this country with no background, with no great support. If this can happen in anywhere in the world, it can happen only in India. That is the beauty of democracy. That is the beauty of constitution that has been framed and given to Indians. So I really feel youngsters like you, Get into the mainstream. This is the mainstream. If you want to make a law, you want to amend a law. So you have to be in that space. 
if you want to make this world better place to live of course there is a sacrifice here selfless sacrifice is here and there's lot of hard work if you complain as a doctor that you will be working for 8 hours or 10 hours in a day at least you get weekly offs as a politician you will not have any weekly offs 365 day 365 days you have to work so that's why i said uh, it's not easy politics is not easy but still lot of youngsters lot of educated people doctors have come and become successful recently we celebrate yesterday we celebrated dr b c roy he is a he should be our inspiration he was a he was participating he was a active freedom uh, fighter for us later he went on to become the chief minister of west bengal for almost uh, 12 13 years and in spite of that he has really excelled in politics and he has created many new things in west bengal even today the india remembers him for what he was so i think the younger generation should really get into this space they should not uh, you know go back because i am seeing lot of doctors today in legislatures lot of doctors in parliament lot of doctors in even administrative service bureaucracy so doctors have diversified today and coming to politics if you ask me honestly i feel that youngsters educated people more and more people such people with commitment should definitely come and serve the nation thank you uh, sir as you said uh, one nation uh, one education system one uh, exam like, i said one uh, nation one exam ah uh, sir uh, similarly like uh, one nation we want uh, similar stipend for all the pgs like <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and fee structure also in karnataka there is uh, 120000 fee structure and we are getting only 55000 and 4550 so requesting you to regarding that also to increase our uh, stipend and decrease the fee structure see i thought you will appreciate me because after me assuming as a medical education i increased during covid from 30% to 60% 30% to 60% is what i increased for house surgeon and uh, post graduates uh, the delegation from even bmcri was there then they had a discussion with me and i increased that never happened in the last 7 8 years if you go back and see the history in 2021 uh we increased Professor. both house, house surgeons and post graduates uh stipends of course there are some states which give more than what karnataka offers of course karnataka also has lot of good things so as a comparison if you make you should compare apple to apple so definitely we'll keep that in mind we'll see what best we can offer and regarding the fees you must have observed though there is lot of pressure on the government for us to increase the government fees i have not raised at all since the time i have come we have not increased the government fees so only the private fees in private institutions we have raised even this year they are asking us uh, they are also trying to compare with other states i said no we are not increasing that is the stand the government has taken definitely government will be with the students and your views avarge mic kodi last started with a girl ending with a girl i had one question um, our college is one of the top colleges in the state but um, our facilities like our canteen are still not up to the mark was there facility? anything 
you can do about it, sir. So facilities like the canteen, sir. Canteen. Canteen is not good. Hello? Uh, hello? Hello, sir. Excuse me, sir. Also, there is hostel problem also, sir. In girls hostel, sir. There is... We are saying one... Uh, in one room, sir, there are four, four people, sir. And there is no open space also, sir. In one room, how many are there? And... Huh? Uh, PG please, interns... Please maintain silence. All are in only one hostel, sir. There is lot of congested and very small hostel, sir. Please... Sir, you can visit and... I will visit. Definitely, I will visit. Sir, After please. this interaction. <laughs> After this interaction, I will first come to canteen. I will visit the canteen and see what is the facility, sir, existing hostel, facility. Sir. Then we can go to hostel also. Definitely, sir, thank I you, will sir. come to hostel. We will see what best to be done. Good afternoon. On behalf of BMCRI, I sincerely thank our Honorable Minister for Medical Education, Health and Family Welfare, Dr. K. Sudhakar, for organizing this program, Yuva Samvada, in our institute. He has interacted, guided, and shared his experience with students. I thank our Dean Come Director, Dr. Ravi K., teaching faculty, organizers, and dear students for attending this program. Thank you. जन गण मन अधिनायक जय हे भारत भाग्य विधाता पंजाब सिंध गुजरात मराठा द्राविड उत्कल वंगा विंध्य हिमाचल यमुना गंगा उच्चल जलधि तरंगा तव शुभ नामे जागे तव शुभ आशीष मागे गाहे तव जय गाथा जन गण मंगल दायक जय हे भारत भाग्य विधाता जय हे जय हे जय हे जय 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 हे